Hello. Do you feel like you have so much noise in your head you can't even think? Or are you at the point in your life where spending time being quiet and in God's presence is the highlight of your day? The latter, definitely the preferable. So why do we continually find ourselves caught up in the cacophony or the noise of this life? You know, my incessant thoughts used to govern me and they would drive me crazy, tell me to, telling me like, do this, do that. And oh, oh, do this too. And this and this, and it would go on and on. And how could I get all 20 things that needed to be done in the time it takes to that I had, which was just get one of them done? My mind was so crammed full of to-do lists and agendas and solutions that I didn't even know how to implement. And then add to those, those things that are my personal things, or my work things, add to that the growing world noise, like gun violence and polar opposite political views, climate change, job shortage, uh, workforce shortage, fuel shortage, you just name it, so many, many more. One world system problems that might occur. These issues just bring up more unresolved issues to fill my mind with things I can't do anything about. You know, even urgent prayer requests, which we can take to God, and I do that, but they can be noisy because many of those can't be categorized in any other way but what we are worried, stressed, and overwhelmed about. Worry is prayer, but many times it's praying to ourselves, which never works. But we've been doing that for years, and it's time to face facts. It doesn't work. Worry does not fix anything. It only adds to this huge mound of problems facing us. When we listen to the noise in our heads, it can make us extremely stressed. This has been associated with a wide variety of diseases, and among the most recent is adrenal fatigue syndrome. First coined in 1998 by James Wilson, um, this syndrome has not yet been listed as a disease by the Food and Drug Administration. Mayo Clinic calls it adrenal insufficiency. And whether or not it's a bona fide disease is of little consequence to those who have experienced it. Those with adrenal fatigue syndrome cannot tolerate prolonged episodes of extreme stress and overwork. Doctors estimate that, that that's probably more than 66% of all people, two thirds. When a person runs a marathon, he or she usually trains for months, you know, a little at a time. Then in one day, they run that race full out. Then they stop and they go through a period of recovery. As humans, we are not meant to run a marathon day in and day out, especially not an emotional, mental, and physical marathon. However, this is exactly what we try to do. And after doing this every single day, we bolster our hectic schedule with likely additional comfort food or some other addiction. We tell ourselves we've been working hard, we deserve it, we've been doing things for others, for the church, for our family, it's who we are, we deserve something for our efforts, and so we eat or drink or take drugs to reward ourselves for doing what we have thought was the Christian thing to do. 
you know, I operated this way for years. I did anything anyone asked me to do and then placated myself with comfort food to relieve the extreme stress that I put every part of me under. I wasn't operating that that way, though, when I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue several years ago. At that time, it had been maybe eight years since I had stopped gorging on food and had given up sugar and flour. So why was I stressed out? Well, to start with, I had stopped making time for myself. Everything was geared towards things I assumed a good Christian should do. However, I was not paying attention to the needs of my body and soul. My doctor said I was eating the way the protocol for adrenal fatigue tells tells me to eat. I wasn't physically exhausted. I was mentally exhausted. There was just too too much noise in my head. My doctor's prescription was to slow down and rest. I was doing everything else right, but the word rest hit me hard. It felt like forced rest because I couldn't do much of anything else. I couldn't think, organize, write, file, or do paperwork or budgeting past maybe five o'clock in the evening. And I was going to bed by at least 10. Before this, I had been working until midnight and after. Yes, I was burning the candle at both ends. I was I probably didn't have any wick left. <laughs> now, while eating right and rest are important, I believe spiritual health was the main key for me. Because in order to stop my mind from spinning into exhaustion, I had to allow God to take over, to think for me. So I ask him, how do I get rid of this noise in my head? And even when I wasn't working, the noise about things I had to do was constantly there. I was happy when I could go to sleep at night and turn that noise off in my brain. But God reminded me of what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 in the message. It says, are you tired? Yeah, yeah, I'm tired. Yes, yes. Worn out. Yep. Burned out on religion. Yes. <laughs> Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover. Recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I longed to live in his unforced rhythms of grace, I felt like I was carrying a heavy burden of a calling I had to complete perfectly, but I was failing big time. These verses told me things that feel like heavy burdens are not from Jesus. Things from him will help me live freely and lightly. And I was in desperate need of that very thing. I was taking the supplements my doctor prescribed, and I'm sure they helped. But what helped me the most was to set aside time in the mornings just to be silent, quiet, and present with God. This is a habit I still do today, most every morning. In those times, I am made aware of the multitude of noises in my mind. It makes me aware of the amount of time that it takes for my body to relax, to clear my mind, and to focus on the lover of my soul. And these times, he just holds me close and tells me to stop and let him 
take over, really take over. In doing that, he promises to show me how to really rest in him. In the past, I was following him. I was doing everything on my to-do list. I was doing everything I could to help God. However, I did not realize he did not want me working myself into exhaustion. He doesn't want the jobs that he has assigned to us to be burdens to us. And one of our times together, he told me, stop. Good advice, God. Be quiet. Listen. Do you hear my voice? What does it sound like? Is it hurried and worried? Or is it soft, gentle, and quiet? I am not in a hurry. You shouldn't be either. Everything I have for you to do on this earth will get done if you just trust me. Slow down. Rest in me. I will restore you. I will walk with you. I will make your burden light. These times with him always revive and restore my spirit. They motivate me to come to him each day just to be in his presence. And when I hand everything I'm stressed and worried about over to him, he takes it off of my shoulders and carries it for me. I don't have to be stressed about a, a thing. All I have to do is be available to him. And I've learned that if he wants me to do something with that issue or problem, he will bring it back to me with instructions. I can tell the noise in my brain to go away and leave me alone. I serve only Jesus and he will let me know what I need to do. He will lead me. I had been looking at my life by what I could see, touch, and understand in the natural. And my times with God had been taken to new heights, to an entirely different world. I cannot see in the natural. In his kingdom, there is a harmonious symphony constantly playing. And as I listen, and play my part, there is peace inside me. When I listen to the noise, the cacophony in my brain, trying to figure everything out on my own and pushing hard to make it happen, the noise gets so loud it makes me noise nauseous. I have to be in tune with God's world, the one that that in faith I cling to even though I can't see. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. God is the one I must depend on. He pr provides this energy of a harmonious symphony to function perfectly. There's a difference between the cacophony, which is a discord of sound, and harmony, a pleasant meshing of sound. God said in Amos, uh, Amos 5.23 in the message, I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me. Other, others translate uh, noisy ego music as hymns of praise that God hears only as noise. Now that's because the people were not singing to him, but were performing to be seen and heard. That's cacophony to God, discord of sound. It should be to us as well. As we must recognize when our attempts at worship really are done to only lift up ourselves, worship ourselves. 
God loves us to praise and worship him. If we are really singing praises to him from a right heart. Psalm 92 says, what a beautiful thing, God, to give thanks, to sing an anthem to you, the high God, to announce your love each daybreak, your faithful presence all throughout the night, accompanied by dulcimer and harp, the full-bodied music of strings. That's the symphony he longs to hear. We need to recognize there is another dimension, a heavenly dimension we belong to. It's also the symphony we can enter into with our lives when we're enmeshed in accord with him. Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now for his kingdom to come on earth, we first have to learn how to follow him. Jesus gave us an important truth about this. In John 5, 19, he said, Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Personally, I also want to do what I see my Heavenly Father doing and join him there. And he will direct me if I want him to. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't direct me, then it's whatever I'm thinking about doing is not worth doing. Because it's not about pushing, but resting in him and allowing him to show me the next step. Now, I can't take a step towards anything until he does that. It's not about more knowledge. It's about trust. It's not about doing five million things. It's about putting Jesus in the center of everything. And if I am doing that, I am doing what needs to be done. It will be easy. All I have to do is follow my leader. He is not in a big hurry. It's me that's in a hurry. Because there is this feeling of the, that the time feels short to accomplish all God has for me to do. I know, though, if I run ahead of him, what I do will be in my strength and will be useless in his kingdom. I no longer want to operate in my strength. I can do that for a while. However, I am much more successful if I operate in God's strength, working through me. Hebrew, let's see, uh, Philippians 4.13, and this is in the Amplified, says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. I am learning that God requires total reliance on him, not just for a specific problem or project, but all the time. He's saying, this is not about drawing from your strength. This is a place you can only go with me. You can't depend on your giftings, your strength, or your experience. You can only depend on me. Now, the book I'm working on right now feels like it is this kind of thing. A book with deeper thoughts because they are coming directly from God and not from me. Some are experiences I've had that God is reframing for me, and I do love it when he does that. I have to stay connected to him because I am just a scribe. He is the one who gives me the words. That means I have to be led by the Holy Spirit. 
He is always with me and is always speaking to me and guiding me. So John 16, 13 says, When the Holy Spirit, who is truth, comes, he shall guide you into all truth. For he will not be presenting his own ideas, but will be passing on to you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Now, <clears throat> we will know we are led by the Spirit when he shares truth with us in a new way that takes us deeper into who he is. Jesus said in John 8, 32, if you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth and the truth will free you. The Holy Spirit will guide us into truth and he will help us experience God's truth. It's in the experience of walking out God's truth that freedom comes. And how can we do that? There is only one way, my friends. God said, call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own. That's in the message. This, uh, Jeremiah 33, 3. This verse should make us want to jump up and down, shout and dance all at the same time. God wants to tell us remarkable secrets, marvelous and wonderful things we don't know and can't know until he reveals them to us. The main way he's doing that in my life right now is as I'm in the process of writing, he will speak to me. It might be writing about something I think I know, and then all of a sudden he reveals new stuff, <laughs> things that take me deeper. It's always in a scripture I've read many times, and then bam, it's like the deeper truth hits me, takes me by surprise, and delights me all at the same time. It's usually an explanation of a life experience, almost magically I see the pieces come together like a magnetic puzzle in my mind. And the pieces had always been there, but all of a sudden they make sense. When we are in the word of God and asking him what he wants us to know, he will show us, he will tell us. It's an, in understanding more of what his word says that will set us apart from those who do not even want to understand, much less do what he wants them to do. Listening to what God tells us will lead us into truth and away from the evil one who is trying to, I don't know, tell us a bunch of lies. <laughs> That's why Jesus told us this. He, he told us that the devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. What is the truth? Whatever God says is truth. We can recognize that by spending time in his word and constantly listening for him to reveal his truths to us. Then the voice of the enemy will immediately be clear and we can totally dismiss it. Paul explained, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. In the same way, we know the thoughts of God, except, I'm sorry, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. This passage, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 13, 
tells us clearly that the Holy Spirit helps us understand the deeper things of God. These aha moments we have when we are reading or studying scripture is, is it's not because we're so wise and intelligent. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit sharing insights with us so we can understand God in new ways. Only the Holy Spirit can explain spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. God's spirit communicates with our spirit, not through our minds or our wills or our emotions. But Romans 8, 16 tells us the spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. When he speaks to us, it activates a part of us that longs to be in his presence. There is a knowing that goes beyond our mind, our emotions, and our logic. The only way I can describe it is that it is spiritual. There is an agreement in my spirit with the Spirit of God. I recognize his spirit based on how he has worked in me in the past and how he is continuing to work with me. I love to lead people through this process where God reveals to them the roots of their issues. I love to help them go deeper with God, to be in his presence, to ask him the right questions. Now, God always wants to hear from us, but the prayer I know he answers most is when we ask him, God, what do you want me to know? And I ask him this almost every morning. And when I do, I move right into his presence. It's the place I long to be. It's a heavenly place. I feel it right now. Andrew Murray, South African writer, leader, teacher, pastor, said, when we pray for the Spirit's help, we will simply fall down at the Lord's feet in our weakness. There we will find the victory and power that comes from his love. Now, I'd like to slightly change that quote. Here's what I'd like to say. When we hear the Holy Spirit's voice. We will simply fall down at the Lord's feet in our weakness. There, we will find the victory and power that comes from his love. The Holy Spirit will sort everything out for us. There won't be any more noise. And if there is, we can quickly dismiss it. He will just help us reduce that noise in our minds when we focus on him. And he tells us through his word and in our spirits while we're communing with him. This is the type of quiet we should all long for. Zephaniah three seventeen tells us, The Lord your God, the Lord your God is in your mists. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That's what I want. That's what you should want too. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, I have so much noise in my mind. It is keeping me from doing any work or getting any sleep. I want to hand to you each one of these things that are keeping me awake. I surrender these issues to you. I need you to help quiet me so I can focus on you 
and you alone. I long to hear the deeper things you want to reveal to me. Quiet me with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you guys want to learn how to become better connected to God in a deeper way, check out one, my one-on-one -on -one private coaching as well as Overcomers Academy. Both of these programs are available at TeresaShieldsParker.com under the weight loss tab. And the links will be down in the show notes. Until next week, sweet grace for your journey.